Here we need the output voltage V out. It's a simple, fairly simple circuit. Uh, more of the emphasis on this problem is trying to deal with the kind of elaborate input where it starts at four volts. Uh, the idea has been like that for a long time. And then in one second intervals, it drops to three, then to two volts, then to one volt, then down to zero, and it stays there. So S domain analysis is definitely the way to tackle something when you have a complicated input like that. So we'll get to that, or dealing with the input there shortly. First off, let's begin by finding the initial condition on our inductor current. So prior to t equals zero, our source voltage is four volts. So I'll go ahead and make that substitution. So again, even though we're looking for um, eventually quantities like what's the initial voltage, we really need to focus on the state variable, which is our inductor current. I'll define it according to be a uh, passive sign convention with our existing polarity there. So we're looking for IL of zero, DC steady state, inductor looks like a short circuit. So the voltage is zero because it's just the voltage across the short wire and the current can be found by noting that the total resistance seen by our full vo four volt source is four ohms. So that current is four volts over four ohms. Current is one amp. I'm going to bring back the original circuit. Now we need to start converting this to the S domain circuit. Um, I'm a, I'll defer working on this one, uh, or at least the details of this until later. Hopefully this isn't going to be too confusing. That's supposed to be V sub S for the source, but we're going to switch it into the S domain, and that's simply going to be the Laplace transform of Vs of t. So we'll get back to that one later. The inductor looks like 0.5 s. Then we need to get the initial condition inserted as either a series voltage source or parallel current source. So after thinking about this for a bit, it, it might seem that if you went with this form, that would work, provided you make sure that you define your output quantity to include that series voltage source. Alternatively, since we're looking for the voltage across the inductor like that, um, if we use our parallel current source form, we don't introduce the extra node like we did right there. So let me opt for this approach, and I'll go ahead and make that substitution in this area. The value of this current source is the initial current, which was 1 amp, divided by S. And altogether, we're looking for that quantity. So we can turn our attention to uh, finding the Laplace transform version of our complicated input signal like this. Now, I didn't draw it earlier, but the circuit is valid for t greater than zero. So that means we can take everything to the left of that circuit and ignore it. So again, for the purposes of our Laplace domain analysis, we assume that initial conditions have been handled 
elsewhere. So as far as our circuit for t greater than 0 is concerned, we assume that Vs was 0, at which time we suddenly had a step change of 4 volts. So let me first start out by writing Vs of t in such a way that we can translate the graph into a suitable combination of step functions. So right at time 0, we can turn on that first step with an amp so use a, a step function that activates at time zero, so that's our u of t, and then we scale it by four, and that gets the correct amplitude right there. So I want to build this in pieces. I want to think of each one of these little steps as being like its own pulse that's being applied, and then we'll just add those together. So we have the first pulse, and I'll just display that. So the way we can make this trailing edge go back to this to zero is subtract a step function, but then shift that over so the step function takes place at one second. So that will make that first pulse. Let me go ahead now and draw in, I'll, I'll take this one away and then draw in the second pulse. So now I add in the second pulse and this, or the leading edge of the step function begins at time one and then we need to make it go away at time two. Let's put in the next pulse. So we say plus 2 u of t minus 2, that's where it step function turns on, make it go away at t minus 3, and one more to go. So I'll have to continue this equation up here. So for the last one, we start it at time 3. I'm sorry, this was supposed to be unit amplitude there, and then make it go away at time four. I'm going to clear out the board here a little bit so I can keep writing. Let me collect some terms here. We had four U of T, we had one term and another term dealing with u of t minus one. So adding those coefficients together, I just I'll call that just minus u of t minus one. You could think of it as having an amplitude of minus one. Do the same thing for u of t minus two. And t minus three. And one more. So I think it's kind of an interesting pattern. This is in terms of volts. So you can kind of think of it as we started with four volts, and then we took away one, took away another one, took away another one, and took away another one until we're left with zero. So to put this into the Laplace, domain, we simply take the Laplace transform of each one of these things. So 4 U of T looks like 4 over S. Now, for this one, you might recall that we can apply the time shift property to this. If we had U of T minus 1, we said what's the Laplace transform of that? Well, we would have the Laplace transform of just u of t, and then we add or multiply by e to the minus a s. So we basically grab whatever you see here and stick it down there. So we have minus 1 over s, e to the minus s, e, I'm sorry, minus we're working on the next one here, minus 1 over s, 
e to the minus 2s minus 1 over s e to the minus 3s minus 1 over s e to the minus 4s. So that's the Laplace version or s domain version of our circuit input. Now having found everything that we need for the s domain circuit we can go ahead and apply whatever circuit analysis technique works the best and looks like nodal analysis will come in handy right there. That's V out of S. So writing a single node equation we've got V out of S minus V S of S over 4 plus V out of S over impedance to ground plus we've got a current exiting of 1 over S and that equals 0. So let me collect some terms. V out of S goes with 1 fourth and 1 over 0.5 S, so that would be 2 over S. On the other side of the equation we have V S of S divided by 4 minus 1 over s. So what we need to do is gather up our previous fairly long expression for v sub s and solve for the required quantity. So again we'll defer that part till later on. Divide through by 1 quarter plus 2 over s. So we need to take this equation and solve for the output as the inverse Laplace transform of V out of S. Start with the usual sort of thing for S domain analysis. Here I've entered my equation, whoop, right there, and yeah, this looks reasonable. This is my equation for the source in the S domain format, and my desired output equation looks like that. So then I request the time domain version. and that yields this expression right there. Um, I think it's always a good idea to try to put this back into a little bit more of a standard form which I'm going to do next and let's switch back to our worksheet. So we have V out of T was minus U of t minus 1 times e to the minus 4t plus 4 and uh, there'll be some other stuff in here. Form of the step function is fine. Might be helpful if you, you know, I, I like to see the time constants showing up nicely in in these uh, equations here. So let's say this is e to the, I'll just pull out the 4 constant for right now. So it gives us minus t plus 1 plus other stuff of course. That's still the same. So we could write this as e to the minus t plus 1 divided by one quarter or 0 0.25. So that way I can look at that and get a feel that we have a um, 250 millisecond time constant or uh, one quarter of a second time constant. And that this form tells me that the 
um, exponential starts one second later. So uh, following that format, we can translate the rest of the maple input. And I'll just put that down in one stroke here. Final units, of course, are volts. So this is what I would call the final result for the uh, e equation form of the output voltage. Let's jump back and look at a plot of that result. So I've plotted V out of T for 0 to 8 seconds. And kind of as you might expect, the activity seems to die off or settle back to 0 after the uh, input drops off to zero at four seconds. We see the voltage coming back to zero. Um, in general, the voltage is always zero except for the vicinity of the, the edges on that complicated um, step that we're looking at. So uh, if we look back at the original circuit for a moment, notice that the output voltage is across the inductor. So in any time you start getting close to a DC steady state, which is kind of what happens when you're away from the edges here. The inductor is always looking more and more like a short circuit. So you would expect to see V out always converging towards zero volts. Uh, so the, that seems to make some sense. Another way to look at this is if we could find the total inductor current, plot that, and then we also know that this voltage across the inductor is L times DIL DT. So let's see if we can make a quick sketch of, of that current right there. Back on our S domain circuit, we'd be trying to find that current. Now I'm claiming that's the same thing as the total inductor current because the total inductor current is actually composed of one two pieces here. So KCL says that those two pieces sum together and uh, that the current through the 4 ohm resistor is the, thus the same as the inductor current. So we could get IL of S as VS of S minus V out of S, because that was the voltage right here, quantity divided by 4. So let me go ahead and plot that. Here I'm calc or, uh, calculating the current, putting it back into the time domain, and then looking up at a plot over that same range. So remember that the initial current in this area was 1 amp, so that matches up. So every time we drop the voltage, we see an exponential decrease, another one, another one, another one finally end up back down at zero. If you were to take the derivative of this curve, you would see that we always have a negative slope associated with it. We have a high value negative slope first, then the slope is not so high later on. If we go back and look at our voltage, yep, sure indeed, we suddenly have an abrupt large value of the derivative, and then it gets smaller and smaller as time goes on. So this picture looks good. And uh, again, it's always a good idea to take a look at trying to match up the results with your physical intuition of the circuit. And we're all